Welcome to our video about Diabetes Diet, Meal Planning Tips for Diabetics by SurvivingDiabetes.com. If you have diabetes, you may be concerned about how to eat. This article provides some tips to make meal planning easier. We'll talk about counting carbohydrates, choosing whole grains over processed meats, and eating more fiber. We'll also talk about flexible meal timing and how to incorporate exercise into your daily routine. To make it easier, we've broken down the diabetes diet into four main areas, carbohydrate counting, whole grains, processed meats, and flexible meal timing. Carbohydrate counting. You may be able to find a diabetic diet that contains carbohydrates you like. But if you have diabetes, the amount of carbohydrates you should eat is not the same for every person. Depending on your height, weight, activities, and medications, your intake can be different. However, carbohydrate counting is one way to control blood sugar. Moreover, it helps you choose the right food that will balance your insulin dose. Despite the difficulties of carbohydrate counting, it can also help improve the self-management skills of patients with diabetes. The Nutrition Facts panel of food products is a valuable tool to help you determine the exact amount of carbohydrates that a food contains. The amount of carbohydrates is given in grams and percentages. The exchange system is based on the guidelines of the American Diabetes Association. It assigns foods to nine groups and calculates their caloric content based on their portion size. It also provides a consistent protein and fat content. When choosing foods, it is important to remember that some carbohydrates are hidden in foods, while others are not. Many restaurant chains will provide the nutrition information of their dishes, which often includes the amount of carbohydrates. It is easy to count carbohydrates in foods when you know the amount in parentheses. Similarly, you can use handheld devices and computer software to calculate the amount of carbohydrates in a specific food. Whole grains. Choosing whole grains in your diet is a smart way to control your blood sugar levels and lose weight. Whole grains have a number of beneficial nutrients and are associated with reduced risks of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. You can eat as much as one quarter cup of whole grain foods per day and still maintain your ideal blood sugar levels. This article will give you some great tips for incorporating whole grains into your diet. The next time you're looking for a new recipe, make sure to consider whole grains. One study showed that higher consumption of whole grain products was associated with a lower risk of type 2 diabetes in men. Interestingly, this decrease in risk was 42% when the extreme quintiles of whole grain intake were compared, and even lower when adjusted for BMI. Furthermore, the association between whole grain intake and type 2 diabetes was even stronger for lean individuals than for those who had higher intakes of refined grains. Other factors such as age, BMI, and smoking status were not associated with the risk of type 2 diabetes, which suggests that whole grains are protective. Researchers have shown that a diet rich in whole grains is associated with a lower risk of type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, and colorectal cancer. The association between increased whole grain intake and improved blood sugar control was also noted in randomized controlled trials. Whole grains also improve body weight and lipid profile. Because of these benefits, many national dietary guidelines and diabetes management recommendations encourage the consumption of whole grains. The authors recommend replacing refined grains in the diabetic diet with whole grains. Processed meats. Eating less red and processed meats is critical to a diabetic diet. Although they contain the same macronutrients, meat products that are processed contain higher levels of sodium and nitrites, which are known to increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. Consumption of meats is also linked to higher levels of inflammation. A Harvard study found that diets rich in meats were positively associated with biomarkers of inflammation. Studies have found a link between processed meat consumption and insulin resistance. However, this link is not proven to hold true. Researchers have found that individuals who eat more meat tend to also drink more alcohol and smoke more, and the link still held. Therefore, Dr. Zelbersagi recommends that people with type 2 diabetes focus on eating lean cuts of meat and roasting or baking them rather than eating them whole. Another reason to avoid processed meat is the presence of chemical preservatives in these products. Some studies have linked the use of these preservatives with increased cancer risks. Likewise, plant-based diets are generally considered to be the healthiest option for diabetics. 
These diets incorporate leaner meat preparations and vegetables and are rich in fiber. In addition, salt is another major culprit. Not only is it used during the curing process of meat products, but it is also used in the cooking of processed meat. Flexible Meal Timing One of the best strategies to follow when on a diabetes diet is to plan your meals and snacks. This method doesn't require the use of a food diary or calorie counting, and the plan is flexible enough to work for most people. A typical meal plan for diabetics should include three to four meals and one or two snacks, and a third of the plate should be non-starchy vegetables. For snacks, a diabetic can eat up to one-fourth of the plate of starchy vegetables and fruit, or one-fourth cup of milk or fruit. Despite the benefits of eating more often, the timing of meals is critical to achieving good glucose control. A study found that people who ate before 6 p.m. had a lower fasting glucose level than those who ate later in the evening. Also, people who ate late in the evening had higher blood glucose levels than those who ate at an earlier time. It's important to keep a food diary to monitor your intake and the timing of your meals. When calculating your carbohydrate intake, a dietitian will help you determine how much you need to eat at each meal and snack. They will take into consideration your current eating habits, your insulin regimen, and your overall goals. Most people on a diabetes diet report that they consume moderate carbohydrate intake and aim for between 44 and 46 percent of their total calories from carbohydrates. Meal timing and the type of insulin regimen will play an important role in how much you eat, so your dietitian will help you find the best option for your lifestyle. Unhealthy fats A new meta-analysis has found that certain dietary fats may be linked to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease and death. The researchers analyzed data from 102 prospective cohort studies that included over 4,000 participants. Participants were randomly assigned to eat different kinds of carbohydrates, fats, and carbohydrates to determine their impact on metabolic health. The researchers also examined the effects of different types of fat, including saturated and monounsaturated fats. The American Heart Association recommends that people consume 5-6% to of their calories from saturated fat. This recommendation is even more critical for people with type 2 diabetes. Consuming 2,000 calories a day, that would equal approximately 120 calories or 13 grams of saturated fat. While saturated fats are dangerous for people with diabetes, there are also many benefits. These fats promote insulin sensitivity and lower cholesterol, which is crucial for heart health. Saturated fats are found in meat, dairy products, and some types of vegetable oils. Saturated fats raise LDL, bad, cholesterol levels, which are linked to heart disease and clogged arteries. To reduce the risk of developing diabetes, it is recommended that individuals consume no more than 15 grams of saturated fat per day, equivalent to about 2 ounces of cheese or 3 quarters cup of fettuccine alfredo. Avoiding sugary drinks While soda may seem like a tasty and refreshing drink, it's still best to avoid sugary drinks on a diabetes diet. While there are many health benefits to drinking water, sugar-sweetened beverages can actually increase blood sugar levels. The best way to avoid drinking soda and other sugary drinks is to switch to water. While it may sound counterintuitive, the Institute of Medicine recommends that adults drink at least 9 cups of water per day. If you can't avoid soda, try drinking seltzer or water. These drinks have no nutritional value and may increase your risk of diabetes. However, if you're a soda lover, you might find it difficult to switch. Luckily, there are other drinks that provide flavor and carbonation without adding extra sugar. You could also try drinking fruit-infused beverages instead of soda. If you don't like fruit, you can also try energy drinks, which contain caffeine and can impact your overall health. Sugar-sweetened drinks aren't the only culprits of high blood glucose. Even juice and squash can be a sugar bomb. To combat this problem, you should try buying no added sugar varieties and dilute them with sparkling water. A healthy way to cut back on sugar sweetened drinks is to make them at home. Using low fat foods is another good option. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more. Stay healthy and fight diabetes.